That's Tommy. Uh, we have uh, County Commissioner Vicki Baker on the line. She uh, was interviewed with others, like the process that's going on today for Norm Childress's seat. She was selected by the county commissioners, uh, Norm and Ron, to uh, take the spot. One of her tasks was to be kind of the point person on the whole COVID thing. She's running for a re-election, and she joins us on the phone now. Morning, Vicki. Good morning, guys. How are you today? Very well. Good. Very well. Well, you've been working to reopen the county during the pandemic. Uh, I guess, uh, first of all, though, before we do that, let's let's talk a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about who you are and why you're running. Well, I am a thir- I moved here almost 38 years ago. My family opened up the first grocery outlet in the state of Washington. I'm a second-generation business owner. So I have been involved in my business. Um, My husband and I own that store for the last 21 years where I've been leading. Uh, Don't take direction from people. You can ask my husband (laughs) and my business partner. Um, Before I decided to run for the position, I spent months of my time attending study session meetings up in the courthouse. And I'm not just talking about the public meetings that are on TV. I went up in their courthouse for four to five hours a day, five days a week. I also attended meetings in the water districts. I went to Cattlemen Farm Bureau, tons of groups, so that I could do my homework on this job. And I didn't want to try to get a job if I didn't think I would like to be like it and to be effective at it. So I certainly spent a lot of time doing that, so I could hit the ground running if I was selected. I think the, that my experience in the past, you know, I've I've been involved with the um, NFIB's Leadership Council. I serve on some state boards like the um, Department of Revenue's Business Advisory Council, where I sit with Amazon and Microsoft and have a voice for small business and Eastern Washington standing up for our people here. Those kind of experiences, um, and and just the fact that I've been dealing with politicians for a long time, working in Olympia on bills and testifying for important things for business and for our region, you know, I became frustrated. Uh, I, I felt that politicians made a lot of promises and they didn't necessarily keep them, and I wanted to be a person who would, if I said I was going to do something, I was going to do it. And so I I believe in that, and I I don't forget my promises, and I think a lot of politicians do that. They'll say anything to get elected, and I am not that person. Since I got uh, my job, which I absolutely love, I've been keeping my promises, and I've been getting a lot accomplished on the job, which I hopefully will get to share with you, um, my very first you know, meeting, uh, we had a 35% tax increase on our agenda, and I killed that. Um, that was a really important thing for me to do. I felt um, in all my years saying I was going to fight taxes and, and have a small, I'm a small government con- conservative, I got an opportunity to do that, and I did. So uh, the same day, that very first meeting, we changed our practices, moved our whole agenda process online so anyone can see any document, any contract, any video, anything you want to see, it's fully transparent. You, you don't. There's nothing hidden from the people. Um, I will always stand up to waste. I hate red tape as someone who's been battling that for my entire career, too, as a small business owner, grocery business, highly regulated, obviously, too. I want to get government out of your way. Um, so I'm not pre- making any promises I can't keep, and I'm running on my record of accomplishments since arriving at the county. You know, phase two is a big deal, and it was a heavy lift, and I hope we get into that conversation a little bit more, and the grant grant programs and moving permitting and planning online. We have our drive-up window underway that will improve our customer service, centralizing our billing uh, or our, our receiving systems for the, um, cu- the customers of the county, the people. And there's a whole lot more that's going on that I could talk about, too. Yeah, well, let's, I, let's talk about the, the COVID. You, you've been working to reopen the county uh, during this pandemic. Explain to us, you know, what, what you've done and, and, and what you hope to, to accomplish in the future. Well, I think it's just really important that everybody understand it's really easy to make bold statements when you're campaigning. Uh, and, but it's just really hard to get things done when you actually are dealing with the situation that we find ourselves in. We have a governor who has a lot of power right now, and he was granted that by our legislature. Our uh, county commissioners here, we don't have a whole lot of authority in this situation. I've been using my voice as loudly as I could possibly use it in order to move our county 
forward through this process. And I know I've been on your show and talked about that. I've also been on Facebook and, and in the paper and, and, and on TV talking about trying to move ourselves forward here and the unfair treatment of our county. Uh, the fact that our the governor created this risk assessment dashboard um, way back in the beginning of this pandemic, it never should have qualified. We sh- it never should have been set up that way for our county because we have such an open and essential workforce. 63% of our people had to work through this entire pandemic. It just didn't make sense for us. And I did make that case with Governor Inslee. And the reason why we did open up a lot of our businesses back in July is because of that conversation. So... We, we've been moving since then. We've had several um, moves forward th- over, the, over the last several months, and probably at least 10 of them. Uh, and, and that has been the result of a lot of pushing. And, it, and the governor is ultimately in control, and it's important that everybody understand that. Um, the legislature was not in session. Of course, the commissioner has no, no authority to get the legislature in session. The legislators don't have that authority either. They desperately wanted to be in session and have a say. Um, I think that what should happen now is the initiative process should happen, and the, and the people may have to do this, because I don't think the legislators are going to, in, in, with the current composition of the legislators, they're not going to take the power away. So the people are going to have to do that, and they're going to have to have it so that in an emergency this cannot happen again. Well, um, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> calling Tim Iman, calling Tim Iman. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know there aren't uh, uh, a whole lot of folks, but I'll tell you, you know what. You want to know who could and should take this up? The very group of folks that got referendum ninety going. That active group of people that got more signatures faster should should be part of the group. I mean, they they should look at the Democrats and see their connection to the governor's power base, and they should say, "Look, these are the clowns that gave us referendum uh, That's uh, right. uh, that that sex ed bill, and we need to clip their wings a little bit. Let's start the uh, uh, statewide initiative." So, put that uh, under free tips from Dave and Lance, <laughs> and we need next have conversation with folks because I think those are some people that maybe could could jump on that kind of an initiative process. It would certainly make the job of uh, of what you guys had to do easier if the governor didn't have that kind of unilateral power, wouldn't it? Well, yes. And of course, I asked for local control months ago. I, I partnered up with over a dozen counties. We asked the governor to let us have control here in Yakima County and all of our counties because we could manage this pandemic better here. But he would not relinquish that, re- that authority, and he wanted to micromanage this emergency, and he has done that. And it's really important that everyone understand that this, this was set up in a way where the, governor, the governor's office has the ultimate authority. He uses his health officials to make decisions, and he has hired out, you know, modelers who, who are constantly studying, you know, whether COVID's going to go up or down or whatever. We're paying for all of that as taxpayers. Um, those, are, those are the things that he uses. And then he basically, just like the way the, the government works, you know, the state government is in, in charge. The, the counties are an arm of the government. We, we don't get to tell the state what to do. So the local officials here, we have to implement it. And I'm, by we, I mean the local health district implements what they are told to do. Well, just, they, I hate to interrupt, but just moments ago, your opponent talked about pushback and that uh, she would have pushed back more and, and pushed back stronger, um, mm-hmm. and, and basically saying that, what you guys did do wasn't enough. Um, response to that? Yeah, no, I, I've been very forceful and have definitely been leading on this issue. I, I don't think that it really would have mattered too much to, to have maybe a, a stronger voice. Um, that you're still in the same situation. I think that the coalition that we had you know, several months ago uh, didn't work. I certainly didn't give up. I have a coalition now with the five counties. Um, in modified phase one, I, I think that, you know, there was a point made that that it's political and, you know, I'm not, it's not lost on me that it's, you know, right before ballot drop. And, I, and I'm not inside Inslee's head. I, I don't know <laughs> what he's thinking, but, you know, it is, an, it is interesting. I will say that. Um, you know, and so when I use my voice and I loudly advocate for our county, um, it's not because I have authority. So I don't want the people to be confused. I have been leading on this issue loudly. It's not because I have any authority to do anything. It's because I'm trying to help get our situation moved to the front burner and get attention, and I'm trying to get our people to contact the governor's office to, to get ourselves 
you know, top of mind, let's just say, and, and I will do whatever I can to get our, ourselves moving forward. Part of this as well is that the health officials, you know, make the ultimate decision over what is safe. And so when, when you say, oh, you know, we should open months ago, this is crazy. Well, if they don't agree, you're not going anywhere. What about the leverage that uh, the health board has over health officials and you mm-hmm. being on that? Can you say, look, tell you what, I think uh, let's play a little Biden here. How about you give us a favorable <laughs> announcement or you, uh, you find a new desk somewhere? I mean, do you guys have that kind of leverage? Well, that's, that's an interesting point, too, because there's seven people on the board. The three commissioners are three of the, of the seven, uh, and you, can, you need one more vote to, to have any sort of majority. And if you look at the composition of the board, mm-hmm. I've certainly looked at that since the beginning. There has never been four votes. So, you know, that isn't for a lack of trying. I, you know, I've looked at legal options. I've been paying attention to lawsuits. You know, I, I've, I've basically unturned, overturned every rock I could think of in order to make things different here. And ultimately, the problem is in the governor's office. I know everybody wants to be upset and blame local people, and it's really easy to do that in a campaign. But that is not the situation that we are in. Gotcha. we got to take a break for news. Please uh, say you can stay with us for the next half hour after news. Yes? You bet. AM 1280 KIT. It's 840. 20 more minutes to spend with County Commissioner Vicki Baker. She's running for re-election. She was appointed to the job. And now uh, looking to uh, to keep it for reals, as we say on the street, yeah. for reals. <laughs> and uh, we were talking about um, COVID, uh, her role as uh, as the point person. Uh, what did you draw the short straw, or how did you wind up with the lead agency <laughs> yeah, status yeah, uh, really. in the COVID pandemic, <laughs> Madam Commissioner? Well, I'll tell you, I grabbed it. Uh, this is something that I'm passionate about. Our small businesses were shut down. Uh, I could not believe it was happening. I still can't believe it happened in America, uh, but yeah. it did. And so as a small business owner who mm-hmm. definitely could not have survived a shutdown, I, was, I had a sense of urgency and a real concern for the people who own businesses and the people who work for them. You know, I feel highly responsible for my staff. You know, I've had a team for a long time. I know they would be looking to me, and I knew across the valley we had – business owners in that situation, and I was very worried about it. Happy to take the lead on this. Tons of passion for it, the issue. So, um, and, and it just made sense. I know everything about Olympia. I've worked back there for a long time and, and know how everything works. So uh, it was just a natural um, choice. All right. Having that kind of passion uh, on a frustration level, 1 to 10, uh, <laughs> what's it been like uh, uh, cl- climbing uphill towards the Capitol Dome? Oh my gosh, it's been it's been a twelve. Yeah, there there is yeah no it's it's been extremely frustrating to be someone who identifies with the problem. You know, I I mean I I've, I've been on NFIB leadership council, worked with small businesses, stand up you know mentored small businesses, um, helped them through you know set up and start up and and you know operations uh, for years. I've been a mentor. I I, I totally knew where they were at. And, and I just um, still can't believe all of this happened. Um, and, and I just, yes, frustration and then some. Um, and, and so I took all of that energy and that passion and, and concern for the businesses, and I, and I just ran with that ball. I think um, uh, the thing that we did with the grants, uh, I, I, I understand that my opponent was confused by that, and I, and I think that if you haven't been involved in state government before, you might be confused. But the, the many grants that have been available, uh, you know, the state loves to micromanage things. Uh, it's, it's a real problem. It's something that I have spoken to our local legislators about, and they're interested in partnering with me to try to help untie the hands of local officials who want to do the right thing and create programs that make sense locally. Uh, but the state micromanages, so they have, you know, grants that make you jump through a lot of hoops, and, they're, and that's just the state. It is not us. When we had some a say, which is with the CARES grant, you know, what the commissioners created. What, what I went for there was just some, an application you could fill out on your cell phone. You could take a picture of the receipt on your cell phone and you push send. It was pretty simple. Uh, and, and that was intentional because the ones the state set up were crazy. You know, they required stacks and stacks 
of you know financial statements and and a lot of it was a barrier truly for a lot of our small businesses who um, you know aren't as sophisticated and didn't have the information. Uh, our grant we went out across the county made sure that our we had bilingual outreach we had pop ups uh, available. It was done through YCDA the Yakima County Development Association so it was blind. So there's there's no hand choosing of who got grants. It, you know, commissioners had no decision in there. It went straight with criteria that we set, looking for gaps, trying to fill um, the true need, and you know, made sure that we reached every city in the county with a grant, at least one. Uh, even the tiniest city got at least one, and um, we made sure that people who had barriers of internet and things like that, we made sure that we reached everyone with that grant, and I'm proud of that. Uh, and then the $2.8 million that we put out, um, you know, I, I asked Governor Inslee for more. He gave a $1 million more to that grant, so $3.8 million went to that. And um, in addition, the cities are putting out some money, too, which might be some of the confusion. The cities are also trying to help their local small businesses. And if they run out of money, we're going to help them, too. So everybody who's currently in the, in the middle of a grant process hopefully will be able to take care of everyone. And, then, yes, it's a lot of paperwork, and it's a hassle. We are in phase two. Um, are, are we there because of the efforts of Yakima's uh, uh, residents that, that helped write letters to the governor? Are we there because of the efforts of, of you at point? Are we there because the governor looked at a calendar and said, ooh, uh, I'm not going to get a lot of votes over there, but I might <laughs> get some? Um, wh- how did we find ourselves now uh, at phase two? Well, I feel like there's a combination of that. So, yes, the calendar, I think, probably made the decision for the governor's office, and I I could only speculate again on what he thinks. But as far as getting the health officials to agree, that is something that I have worked hard at. And I'm trying to make the case that there has to be a balance between health and the economy. And, you know, we have suicides on the rise. We've got drug drug problems, people who are not in church receiving, you know, the, the fellowship that they need, the support they need. for. We have a huge recovery community here. All of those gaps were were a problem. And I think, you know, the, the fitness facilities that people were not healthy because they couldn't work out. There, there was a, just a huge long list of things that I've been pushing the health people on for a long time. And when I say health district, you know, lo- local health people and state health people and me. So here we are in a room, you know, there's five, six people. I'm the only one representing the economy in these meetings. And so, you know, it's, it's important that, yes, I pushed on that. They had to have buy-in or else it wouldn't go to the governor's office. And in the end, after the officials, the, the health officials agree, the governor makes that decision. I don't know why he did it, but I'm glad that he did. Gotcha. All right, let's uh, let's talk about a couple of uh, uh, more political things uh, as we use the rest of our time here. Um, the county uh, POCs will meet today. They'll they'll select a uh, uh, their choice what, names three three three, three, three choices That's to right. send on to you guys right. uh, for consideration uh, to basically the process that you yourself went through. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel that? Uh, uh, say, sh- how do I say this? Say the election takes place, you lose the election. Should you still have a say in choosing which one of those three uh, goes on to the uh, be on the county commission next year? Well, I, that's not going to be a problem because I'm going to win. But besides that, I, I think that this this appointment needs to happen as soon as we can possibly vet the candidates and meet them and and make that decision. The deadline is November 15th. That decision can be made sooner. And you should understand that the commission has 45 boards that we sit on. We divide those up between three normally, which is a lot of work. You know, this is a full-time job. I went home at 8.15 last night. I work late all the time. This is, this is a lot of work right now. Um, and we cannot just keep kicking the can uh, at the county. We need to get some work done, and we need a commissioner in District 3. How, how fast do you... Do you see that person in place before November 15th? I don't know. I, I think we have to find out who the who the candidates are. I, you know, I purposely not. I am a PCO, um, but I purposely have not been paying attention. I think the party needs to make the decisions and put the people through, uh, and then we will we will look at who the candidates are and we'll meet them and make the decision. It, it might be an easy decision. It might be a hard decision. I ha- I don't know. All right. Well, let's talk party then for a second. Um, 
the uh, your opponent says that um, she wasn't necessarily a party insider um, in terms of uh, why she wasn't selected. Uh, she points to a victory in the primary then as proof positive that where the voters stand on on all of that. Um, what role should the party play uh, in county government? Do you think? Uh, partisan, nonpartisan city uh, councilors should the county commissioners be nonpartisan, or is there a a uh, political role for the Republican Party to play? Well, I believe that that it's set up intentionally. This is a state government set up, uh, not a not a local decision anyway. But the way the state set it up is is the way that it is. Um, it is a ninety percent a management job. It's a CEO job. It, the, the politics of it come into play, I believe when you want to pick the type of CEO that you want. I am a conservative Republican. I have a very Republican standpoint. I look at budgets. You know, I have a 1% profit margin business. That means I have a really lean business. I'm used to running tight, you know, budgets. That is that it means that I'm a fiscal conservative and I'm a, I'm a conservative person. I think that's important in the process. Um, I, I do think that it's important I clarify. I am not a party insider. And, and the PCOs, if you go and look at who is a precinct committee officer, these are, these are party workers. These are people who are the boots on the ground in the campaigns in the county. These are people who actually care about getting Republicans and conservatives elected. If I'm an insider with these people, I'm okay with that. They are, they are our party. They are the conservatives of the county. Um, and they picked me. 52% of them did. Uh, the commissioners also picked me, and, and the three prior commissioners also have endorsed me. They know this is a challenging job, so they want someone experienced, ready to work. I, I did all of the legwork. I spent months, as I said, making sure I was ready for this job. Well, this uh, election that uh, you're, you're about to uh, participate in could, in some ways, be the last election of its kind uh, for the Good. county, That's right. if what America has its way, yeah. um, you guys mm -hmm. were given the alert um, several months back, told to uh, check yourself, uh, <laughs> re consider wh what the best way to not to disenfranchise voters might be. Um, uh, one idea was that uh, you know d district elections only. Another is this ranked choice uh, option. Uh, what's the status of conversation with One America now, and where does all of that stand? Well, it is a lawsuit now, and unfortunately, you know, I'm named, and so it's hard for me to discuss the details of that okay. lawsuit. But I'll, I can talk about the Latino community in general, um, and, and, I, and I'm happy to do that. My minor is Spanish. Um, I used to be fully bilingual. Um, in school, I lived in Ecuador. Um, I went to the Universidad Cato Católica in, in Quito and lived with a family down there. Um, it, it gave me a great um, language skill that I've used throughout my career at, at owning a business that has a very bilingual clientele and a very bilingual workforce. Uh, I believe that I will be someone who can unify our community, and I think it's important. <laughs> So, so we can't ask you. Would you support a district ele districted elect elections? Yeah, I don't think I'm supposed to talk about okay. the voting system. This is this is currently being handled, and the and the way that the county yeah. does things is is uh, is something that may be confusing to people too. The county, the commissioners are like the CEOs. The the lawyer is Joe Bruzic. You know, he's he's handling this. Right. He's our lawyer. So I listen to my lawyer. I'm, I'm smart. I've been in business a long time. <laughs> Around here, our, our standard go-to line when asked something that you really can't respond to is, shut your face. <laughs> so you, you, you feel free to. Imagine if she did that. Feel free to throw that out at us. That, that's fine. All right. So let's assume that, uh, that COVID uh, recedes into the rear view. Life gets back to uh, what we know to be normal. And then looking ahead uh, for next year and uh, three more years beyond that, what do you see as the challenges, the projects that uh, you'd like to be involved in? Oh, man, I've got a long list of initiatives that I've started. I hope I get to continue. The, uh, the recovery from COVID is going to be challenging, but I think we have to rebuild our economy and we have to encourage development. For me, that is not government um, coming up with smart ideas. That is untangling rules and regulations, red tape, 
we have our east-west corridor underway, uh, broke ground on that in August, that will create a lot of opportunity mm. out in the county for, you know, thousands, it, I, I, think, I believe thousands, there's hundreds of acres out there that can be developed for homes and apartments. We have a shortage of housing. It's a serious problem. Uh, it's, it's a great um, bright day for the county out there. That we'll go across the river. We'll go over to the mill site. That's going to be the city's project. That's going to be a, a big thing coming up, too. We'll partner with that as much as we possibly can. But as far as me, I, I will untie red tape. I know that we cannot live on government uh, subsidies and grants and all the stuff that's going on right now. We have to get people back to work. We have to get food on the table for everyone who is having a hard time right now. Um, I'm, I'm a reformer. Uh, I've worked in the legislature for a long time. I, I know all the legislators. I'm, I will partner with them uh, in order to untie the hands locally and get things done here. Um, I'm on the leadership team at our Washington State Association of Counties. That's one commissioner for each county. I'm on the legislative steering committee for that. We definitely are working on um, great reforms next session. Uh, I am focused on service, the drive up for our county. Um, is underway and, and will be completed soon. You know, I've, I've got a lot of things happening. You know, we're moving permitting and planning online so people don't have to sit up in the fourth floor waiting room anymore. I, a lot of builders are pretty happy about that who were sick of sitting up there for hours. Um, there's a lot more on my website of uh, accomplishments since I got there. I think it's important that um, anybody who is concerned about uh, Vicki Baker and her energy should know. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm a wife, you know, I'm a mom, I own a business, I've hired someone to be my full-time replacement, so I am not at the grocery outlet except when I'm shopping now, which is so strange, but that's the current situation, but I still have a business. I sit on 16 boards and commissions right now. I'm dividing up more than that with Ron, um, and I'm running a tough campaign. Um, I have tons of energy. I don't think anybody needs to worry about energy, and I definitely know how to get things done. I'm a real conservative Republican, and I really um, will fight for our county going forward. Well, that's almost a combination of uh, <laughs> answers to one question asked and another about to be asked, which was, of course, right. why should we vote for you? And yeah. uh, uh, you gave us a pretty good summation there, but we will give you the option to uh, flesh out the rest of your elevator speech. Um, it is a tough campaign. Uh, Amanda McKinney is a, a, a worthy opponent. You guys are both from the Republican Party, uh, so you both have similar uh, sorts of uh, core values, I guess I would believe. Um, she knows a lot of folks. She's been a successful business person. You've been a successful business person. So it's a tough, uh, oh, a tough, I, tough circumstance. It tough isn't choice. a lot of times in Yakima County. The uh, Republican uh, is pretty much uh, guaranteed yeah. a yeah. Uh, uh, sixty forty win without having to work up too much of a sweat. You have a, a, a challenge on your hands as the incumbent. And uh, you're trapped in an elevator with Jack and Lance, something I wish on no one. But here's, here's your chance to convince them and anybody listening why we should vote for Vicki Baker. Okay. I want everybody to remember this is a 90% management job, and it requires CEO skills. I have the perfect background for this job, and I am a lifelong conservative. It is a terrible time to change course. I have a lot of good momentum going with a lot of initiatives in, in motion. I'm a leader who listens to the people. I, I will listen to all of the people and not just well-connected people. I, I will serve everyone. And that's what I do in my business and have done for my entire career. Before I decided to run for the position, I spent months of my own time. I attended study session meetings. I, I went to all kinds of of stakeholder meetings. I, I definitely have done my homework and I, I hit the ground running in January and I am running full speed right now. I work full time all the time and you can count on me to do a great job. Um, I, I know all about red tape. I know about government overreach and I understand the frustration when politicians tell you anything to get elected. I will not do that. I will, I will keep my promises to you. And I, I want you to understand my accomplishments, too. The 35% the tax increase being blocked, my third day in office, that sets the tone for what you're going to get with me. I always will stand up for you. I will cut red tape and get government out of your way every opportunity that I find. And remember, I have plenty of energy for this job. 
I am, I am ready to go 24-7. Well, I already am. So I will continue to, to work for you. I ask for your support and your vote in November. I want to keep working hard for all of the people of this county. Commissioner Vicki Baker. Vicki Baker. Thank you so much. I want to just say this on a separate note. We miss turkey bowling, okay? <laughs> we, we do. We do miss turkey bowling. Um, Me too. What a great cause and, and a lot of fun that it was. Um, Yakima is fortunate, in my opinion, to have uh, two right. such quality candidates. There's no question about that. Um, only one spot, and so everybody's going to have to uh, try to weigh this. We're going to put your interview. We're going to put Amanda's interview up on our uh, website and on our Facebook today for those folks who maybe didn't catch it all or can be directed to come there and, and hear your messages uh, side by side. We wish you uh, the very best of good luck. Um, you still have the job and you're on the job. And as uh, uh, news announcements come through about success moving ahead and all of that, we look forward to more conversations with you on that. Vicki, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki.